the walls would be constructed over a year from an unstabilized rammed earth composite sourced from within the brownfield sites themselves, reducing transport and manufacturing pollutants and the associated costs. Designed apertures in the wall would allow the free passage of plant and animal life to enter the sites at will. Embedded within the wall structure would be an adaptable building for human use, one part used by ecologists to analyse and learn from the emergent urban wildlife developing within the sites, and the other to provide a space for the general public to observe and learn from the ecologists about the importance brownfield sites hold for biodiversity levels. Plants provide the foundation on which all other living things depend. By reducing human access, the wall system is really allowing space for plants transported by wind, birds and mammals to spontaneously grow through the process of ecological succession. Biodiverse habitats comprising a wide range of living things will emerge and transform as biodiversity increases over a period of roughly 200 years. We're talking about 200 years, but we're actually not sure because no one's ever really monitored anything that's been left to degrade. So it is what urban ecologists need because what we don't have is that baseline data on how long does succession take. Let's be the pioneers. Let's be the new explorers. Just watch on our doorstep. Within the reserves, as the ecologists carry out their essential work, guided walks along demarcated paths offer the public the opportunity to experience the variety of emergent life firsthand. Over the course of the first 50 to 60 years, as ecological succession takes hold, first lichens neutralize the concrete, allowing mosses to settle. These then form surface soils for pioneer ruderal plants to break the ground with their root systems, making way for larger secondary successional plant species, all the while forming more resilient levels of biodiversity. Outside the reserves, over a period of 70 to 100 years, Natural erosion from wind and rain allow openings in the walls to emerge at specifically choreographed locations, forming gateways for free human access as the sites reach resilient levels of biodiversity. Now that the sites are no longer under restricted access, designed adaptability allows the buildings to freely change program. These might range from provision for local businesses, short stay accommodation, or gathering spaces for human and non-human life. Continuing towards a climax habitat, projected to be reached 200 years from the time of building, the rammed earth wall structures would disintegrate, welcoming ever larger non-humans into the sites, as the soil from the walls re-enters the biogeochemical cycle of which it is integral. As time moves on, the agency of the architect dwindles, as the vitality of the ecosystem shifts the site's identities moment to moment. The process of ecological succession becomes the architect. <laughs>